<clears throat> okay, uh, Simon Ship 315, uh, welcome to Ship Handling for the week 13. Okay, so week 13, we will be discussing the actions to be taken following a collision. So if a collision happens, okay, what are the actions to be taken? Okay, for example, if this happens, although we don't want this to happen in our vessel, okay, or in our life, uh, there are cases, no, uh, where we should be aware at least what are those steps that we should uh, do, okay, in case of collision. Some other companies or safety management system, they even have the collision drill, okay, it's not abandoned ship drill, but it's a collision drill. It's indicated on their contingency plan or emergency response plan. So ship collision, let's define it. It's a structural impact between two ships or one ship and a floating or steel object, such as an iceberg or some other vessel. Ship collisions are of particular importance in marine accidents. Some reasons for the latter are the following. Loss of human life, environmental impact of oil spills, okay, marine environment, where large tanker ships are involved, financial consequences to local communities close to the accident, financial consequences to ship owners, yung may-ari ng barko, ship loss or penalties, and damage to coastal or offshore infrastructure, for example, collision with bridges, with uh, terminals, with wharves, with piers, okay? So those are the damages. And with that, if you can see, no financial consequences. What is the first action a boater or a navigator should take after a collision? Take the following actions. If you have been involved in a collision, stop and identify yourself, your vessel's name, your home port, your ports of origin, and the destination to the other craft. Assist the crew of the other vessel if it is safe to do so. Okay, Even if you have collided, it is your responsibility to save your crew's life and the life of the other vessel that you have collided with. Next, how can we stop collision at sea? If the collision already occurred, of course, you cannot stop collision at sea. But collision avoidance checklists are the following. Avoid ship channels where possible or cross them quickly. Be alert. Watch for the ship traffic. Think before you drink. Be seen, especially at night. No whistle signals or the sound signals as per the part D of the collision regulations. Five or more means in danger or meaning you are in doubt. Use radio channel 13, VHF channel 13. That is bridge to bridge communication. Write it down, gentlemen and ladies. Use up to date navigational charts. Okay, always update your this and everything. No, your passage plan. Dapat updated siya. What is the reason for ship collision at sea? It's mostly it is human error. No, probably uh, there's a drunk officer, okay, handling the watch or heavy weather, okay, next to human error, uh, low pressure areas or storms, hurricanes, sandstorms. You may encounter it, no, and fog, uh, restricted visibility. So you may encounter. Uh, with the visibility being restricted by rain, by snow, by sleets, by ice pellets, okay, you can suffer a collision. You might suffer a collision with those uh, scenarios. Next, probable causes of ship collision incidents. As we all know, collision is structural impact that occurs between two vessels and may result in severe damages, pollution, or even loss of human lives. Most ships' collisions have been caused by the lack of communication between vessels, incompetence, or doesn't understand colleagues, poor knowledge, ayun, no? uh, not adhering to collision regulations, restricted visibility, okay? Uh, cannot navigate by radar only, bad weather conditions, failures of critical systems for vessels navigation. Actions to be taken in case of a ship collision. When a ship collision occurs, okay, you have to 
check the following. The ability to maintain stable or stability. We have the magandang gabi bayan ko. The meta center, the gravity, the buoyancy, and the kill. Okay? You have to determine the writing arm. It should be uh, able to come back to its original position. The movement, the navigation. The functionality of major machinery systems and equipment. You have to check the crew, the cargo. Uh, is there any leakage? The environmental safety. Okay, is it going at sea? Or have you spilled the oil? Okay. Notifications. Have you done all of it to all the stakeholders, charters, ship owners, uh, port authorities, local authorities, coast guards, navy vessels, other vessels? You have to do all those things. So, napakahirap, gentlemen. No? It is very hard. I've never encountered collision in my life. But I don't want to experience it by myself. Okay? So, what is the biggest danger to life when, you, when your vessel has collided with another ship? Again, loss of life, environmental impact, and chemicals or other harmful materials that can affect the marine environment or the marine life. What is the cause of most accident at sea? Yun, no? Nangyayari actually tong collision uh, as per the studies that I have read, no? Engine breakdown or engine failure, even if standby engine, no? During pilotage. Uh, there are cases or times that the main engine doesn't work, okay? Or the diesel generator stops. There's no power, but currently the vessel is on pilotage and uh, swinging the vessel on starboard or port kasi nasa kanal ka. And that can occur. You can be collided with vessel, with warps, with pier, with other targets and everything. And you can only drop your anchor in that instance, okay? Because you have no engine power. Next. What is the most famous marine tragedy of all time? Of course, we know the Titanic, okay? The Wilhelm Gaslov is the deadliest in history, killing 9,000 people when it sank in 1945. Similar to Titanic, the Jola, the SS Kiangya, the MB Donya Pass were carrying civilians when they were sunk, okay? Colrex states that as per Rule 7, risk of collision, taking compass bearings, is one of the most important means of determining risk of collision. However, good visibility is needed to use this technique and a series of number of bearings need to be taken. On smaller vessels, bearings may be taken using a hand bearing compass. On larger vessels, a bearing or azimuth ring is used. Okay? And remember, even with an appreciable change of bearing with larger vessels or nearby vessels, change of bearing does not actually give you uh, the clearance with the risk of collision. Remember that. Okay? Rule 7, covering risk of collision, warns that assumptions shall not be made on the basis of scanty radar information. The word scanty information means small or insufficient information. That means the watchkeeper must not assume that there is no risk of collision based upon insufficient information. Again, we go to rule 8. Action to avoid collision. Any action taken to avoid collision shall be taken in accordance with the rules of this part and shall if the circumstance of the case admit be positive, made in ample time or enough time and with due regard to the observance of good seamanship. Any alteration of course and speed the collision shall, if the circumstance of the case admit, be large enough, meaning it shouldn't be in a gradual alteration of course and speed, to be readily apparent or uh, visible or conspicuous with the other vessels. Observing visually or by radar, a succession of small alteration of course and of speed should be avoided. Okay? It should be avoided. So what are the actions to be taken following collision? Of course, inform the master, the engine room. Uh, this is obvious, but make sure you inform the master if he's not on the bridge, inform the engine room and stop the engine. The officer of the watch should not hesitate to call the master even if he has the slightest doubt about any given situation. Even if it's just light, do not hesitate 
to call the master. Otherwise, it might be too late, okay, for you to dodge the other vessel to avoid collision. Stop the engines, obtain an assessment of the situation. It may be prudent to maintain a few revolutions in the engines to avoid the other vessel form flooding and consequent sinking when both vessels are separating. Sound emergency alarm, of course, the general emergency alarm. Switch on deck lights and non, not under command lights. Inform master and engine room. Yes, Anion? Anion? Someone talking? No. Okay, let me continue. Broadcast, okay? When you say broadcast, announce it on the VHF. You have to announce. Uh, if uh, your vessel is sinking already, then announce the prefix word mayday. Mayday, mayday, mayday. This is uh, name of your vessel. IMO number or call sign, nine, Victor, Fakta, Chera, six. In position, ladies and longitude, collided with the other vessel. In position, blah, 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 blah. Okay, my ship is sinking. I need immediate assistance. Okay, then other vessels or the coast stations will be able to hear it accordingly. Carry out head count and damage assessment if uh, still time. There's still time. Master damage control parties and detailed duties. Order bilge pumps, ballast pumps to start pumping out affected area. Shut all watertight doors and fire doors, okay? To preserve the, the buoyancy or the reserve buoyancy of the vessel. I say, if you have shut all the watertight doors and the fire doors, even if the vessel halfly subsized, uh, submerged or capsized, there's still it is still capable of refloating, especially for tanker vessels. Next, communication officer stand by to obtain weather report. Navigation officer to update vessel's position, assist master as required. Prepare survival craft, the lifeboats, of course, life rafts, immediate launching if the situation requires. What is chief officer's duties in collision? Internal sounding of all tanks, check watertight integrity. You have to determine which tanks have been uh, collided or has been hold. Machinery space, space, wet or dry? Is it wet or is there any ingress of water? Head count check for casualties. Investigate pollution possibilities. Consider ballasting to bring damage portion above waterline. Okay, so if the damage portion is above the waterline, then the ingress of water will be uh, minimalized, okay? Will be put to minimum. So with that, much lesser yung, much lesser yung chance na mag ka. Master's legal obligations in collision, stand by to render assistance, okay? Exchange information with the port authorities for the departure, for the destination. Mention the particulars of the vessel. Report accident to Marine Accident Investigation Bureau, okay, or the MAIB, the port authorities, coast guards, uh, charters, ship owners, and of course, make entries in the official deck logbook. The logbook used to record various data, scenarios, situations, including emergency situations and actions, which are later used for reference case study and for marine insurance purpose in case of damage to the ship or loss of ship's property should be properly filled without any errors. External communications following emergency are the following, urgency and distress signals, the exchange of information with other vessel, again, communication, the bureau, company owners and charters. Uh, Amber, if you are in America, Coast Guard, the Maritime Rescue Coordinating Council, or the MRCC, the agents, okay, uh, the tugs, the towing tugs required, the dry docking personnel or authorities, and of course, consulting with the weather reports. Why? Baka mamaya, meron na namang low pressure, and it and in the situation will be worsened. So you have to be prepared. So what is AMBER? It's an automated mutual assistant vessel rescue system. 
Its principle is to utilize the resources of many merchant vessels which are at sea at any one time following a maritime incident. The purpose is to maximize the efficiency in coordinating assistance in order to save life and property. Okay? So, sino ang operating body ng AMBER? It is the United States Coast Guard. It's a voluntary service. Vessels of 1,000 gross registered tonnage engage in voyages of 24 hours or more. Participate in it. Initial ships data regarding ship size, speed, communications, equipment, and facilities are kept in confidential record and no information is disclosed except those relevant to search and rescue operations. It's a worldwide operation and free of charge with the exception of only UK stations. Format can be obtained from the Admiralty list of radio signals, volume one. Or also, you can find it from the volume six. Okay? There are six volumes. Uh, ALRS, no? Nasa volume six din yun. Emergency alarm. Alarm indicates that immediate danger to human life or the ship and its machinery exists and that immediate action should be taken. The general emergency alarm signal for an emergency station must serve passengers and seafarers of vessel is signal of at least seven short blasts followed by one prolonged blast on the ship's whistle or siren. And these are the general emergency alarm, seven short, continuous ringing, it's a fire alarm, MOB, it's a man overboard or the three long blasts, verbal or public address. Combination with the general alarm, abandoned ship, CO2 alarm, it's a mission of or discharge of carbon dioxide alarm on certain uh, space, like for example, engine room, pump room, okay, something like that. Continuous sounding alarm, meaning there's a man machine or navigational alarm, probably on the BNWAS or the bridge navigational watch alarm system. Okay, so. What are the 10 important things to do during ship collision accident? Should be understood the following point are just for the purpose of guidance and during a real situation, one's knowledge, seamanship, and personal competence come into play in handling the situation and saving lives. However, gentlemen, once collision occurs, okay, iba na yung mangyayari. It, it will not rely on the checklist or on the drills that we, we, we are currently doing actually. Medyo, uh, paano ko ba sa magulo. Magulo na yung performance ng crew. And even with the masters, yung order niyan, pasigaw na, nawawala na siya. No? If, as, you can, as you have uh, watched the Titanic movie, you've seen how the, the veteran master has performed. Nawala na siya sa isip niya. And he even died. Okay? With the vessel sinking, no? With that uh, Titanic vessel. So, ganun. In real life, real scenario, ganun yun. But, okay, the situation should not overcome your master's thinking or decision making, no? Uh, kaya ka tinatawag na leader. It's because you can lead even in those uh, times. Again, inform the master and engine room. Overriding authority is coming from the master. Immediately send distress signals via VHF, MFHF, or the medium frequency, high frequency, and satellite C. And of course, emit the distress signals as per call regs. What are those? Of course, we have the pyrotechnic signals, the right, uh, red parachute players, hand players, Boyan smoke signals, okay, those can be uh, used in times of distress. Record important data, okay, on, of course, on the deck log book. Sound the alarms again, okay. It should be noted the engine room should not be left unattended if the impact of collision is minimal, which do not need an immediate evacuation of the compartment. Also, the engine room in charge should also ensure all officers and crew working in the engine room are ready with a life jacket and TPA or the thermal protective aid if immediate evacuation is required in the later stages. Again, assess the damage, send an officer, probably most, most likely the chief officer, responsible to the area where the vessels have taken the impact, inquire about the percentage of damage, damage occurred, 
If the damaged area is an enclosed space, ensure you take all necessary precautions for the enclosed space entry. Make an assessment of the damage and report the same to master. Any decision should be taken by the master. If the master is capable of making decision or carry out his duties, the person next to his command should do so. And that is chief officer. Again, chief officer has to take the soundings of all tanks, cargo tanks, manyan, or ballast tanks. Take immediate action in case of danger. Why? You, uh, for example, there's an ingress of water, hold lang siya, but then you have neglected, then it will add up weights, it will cause unstable buoyancy or stability, then it might cause your vessel uh, to capsize or sink. Okay, with the increasing riding moment and the weaker riding arm, your stability might be affected. Check for oil spill. Why? If there's an oil spill, then you have to pay for the penalty or uh, probably your vessel will be detained at pati ikaw, pwede kang makulong, no? Being the master, the chief officer, the chief engineer, or whomsoever, okay? And the company, the ship owner, will have to pay. Reach the nearest port if possible. Uh, with that, if you have already collided, you cannot just easily reach the nearest port. Not unless if all the parameters of safety has been uh, involved already uh, with the other vessel, with your vessel, with the crew, with the ship, with the marine environment. Abandon the ship only if everything else fails. Okay, so if the vessel is, is still seaworthy, remember the word seaworthy, you cannot abandon the ship. Only the master can announce abandon ship. Okay? So even if you have collided and you are not capsized, you cannot just immediately abandon your vessel or deploy your lifeboat, board it, and leave the vessel without master's authority. Okay. So if a new person joins the vessel, he should be well familiarized with vessels, emergency procedures, escape routes, location of LSAs or the life-saving equipment or appliances before the vessel leaves the port. Any emergency requires quick and prompt response from the crew, and this can be only achieved by regular training and practice of such emergencies as mock drills. Okay, emergency procedures, what are the needs to be done? Okay, you may refer with the bridge procedures guide, with the SMS or the safety management system, or with your emergency uh, procedures or protocols. Okay, so BPG is an international international chamber of shipping or the ICS publication or libro. It aims to reflect best practice on board merchant ships, embracing standards and recommendations promoted by the International Maritime Organization. Okay, so that is my last slide for the Seamanship 315 action in case of a collision, following a collision. Any questions? Plus? None. Okay. With that, I'm just going to take the attendance.